celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Everybody sing. <laughs> Hey everybody, hello, how are you? I'm Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble, a little program that goes on until midnight tonight and uh, we hope you will be uh, uh, enjoying it and I am joined this evening, I almost wasn't, by, actually these cameras don't match each other very well, I have to work on them during the week. Yours, yours looks different than mine. See, it was slightly. I, I have mine worked out now, so it looks good, and yours, so it makes you look really. Pa- you look tired. I'm exhausted. And I don't feel well, and I asked to be excused tonight. Mm-hmm. And you, you put on a pissy fit, and, and I didn't put on a hi- No, did. I didn't put on a hissy. You see what fit. I put on the bear? What'd you put on the bear? What? The Siddick outfit. Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> there, <laughs> why it fits the bear? Yeah. I see. So you put something on. When did you do that? This afternoon. Really? Oh, yeah. okay. No, I don't want to be here tonight. I'm sick. Ooh. My back hurts. It's pouring rain. It's freezing out. And I'm just exhausted. And you know why you feel that way? Why? Because you're an old lady. Well, that's true, <laughs> too. <laughs> well, the weather has been just... Oh, my God. We had a nor'easter here. Yeah. I mean, that's major. It, 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 damn sure major. Sure was. You bet your life it's major. It's, uh, it, 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 but it, it's, it, a guy it, in my office told me that if I took a subway this, this, to this place mm-hmm. and then I got on the B to come home, I wouldn't have to walk outside in the rain, and it worked. Wait a minute. Where did you get on the train? Right below my office building. I got on the, um, the E. The E. And, and got off one stop later at, 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 at 7th Avenue and changed for the B. Oh. I, you didn't know that, did you? No. Okay. Well, that's good. And I didn't have... I, the only time I had to walk out in the rain was when I came out. I had to walk a city block, and it was ripped pouring and windy and my umbrella went inside well, out. Well, you said that it was kind of it was kind of uh, damp in the subway too because Oh yeah, there was water all over the floor for people's boots, boots and, and yeah. umbrellas. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's pretty pretty crummy out there. And cold then and then cold. it started it started snowing, snowing, but it started snowing this kind of snow where you got to know that it it wet was wet snow that, that by so the time wet, it hits no, the street it's water. No, it wasn't also that it was wet. It it, it, snow usually goes one way, it goes the other, it comes straight down. This was going like this. All over the place, because, well, it was a nor'easter. Yeah. Is it still snowing out there? I haven't looked. Uh, no. Anyway, I, I've got sinuses. Oh, here problems. we go. Here we go. What? Where's the music? Where's Alex's uh, medical update music, please? Uh, do I need to? Maybe I should uh, get the music together. Get I think you should. Here. Call Alex's medical yeah, update. Uh, med- <laughs> Alex's medical update. Update, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, Have a little lead in with the band, and yeah. then you just start. Start from the top and work all the way down. So, so far, are you happy with our new medical, um, uh, our new pharmaceutical deal? Well, so far, I know John, and I know Helen, and I'm, and the other but woman. But you also know that you're saving. I mean, I, I was amazed. I figured this is one of those things where you get three months' worth of your drugs at the at one, one time. One time. Okay. So I figured we get them at one time. Okay, I pay about one ninety-five a month. So probably over over for three months it'll be like six hundred bucks. Mine was a hundred and two. Yeah, mine was one twenty-five. But that was minus the Cialis, which they can't give. Mine me. was my minus the Restatius, which I got today. Yeah, but you know it, it's amazing how how inexpensive that is i thought it i didn't i thought it would i didn't think it would be cheaper i just thought it would just be another form of yeah i have a new friend i have helen and john now that we're on a first name basis and um he's got my credit card that they're just keeping in my file you know they do a good business down there i they said they've been open a year and a half and you know they don't have uh, deliveries yet but that's 
on the schedule. Yeah, but I get it's owned by Walgreens. It's called ask. Community by Walgreens. Is that what all it, it says? is? Yeah, all it is is that instead of walking in and the the birthday cards are on one side and the makeup on the and other. the ha- candy is on the other and the makeup is down this aisle, you walk in. It's just pharmacy. Pharmacy. That's, that's it. it. And that's, that's, I feel good about that. Yeah. And it's all pickup because you can't walk in with a prescription today. Doctors have to call them in. And it's only Is five. that true in every state or just New York? What? Where they, ha- they call the prescriptions. They don't give you a written prescription anymore. I haven't seen a written prescription in a couple of years. But I'm saying, is that New York or is that all over? Uh, I imagine that's all over, but I don't know. Some people. It's a good idea. Them. I mean, like when I had to go for my, my, um, my, x-ray or my ct yeah. scan i mean then they give you a written thing to take with you yeah but of normal prescriptions now they're called in by law by, by law. law they're called oh in. yeah i mean he doesn't have a prescription pad anymore by law they call them in now wow there's just too much abuse what of, of like finasteride no, or but you get you get a pain pill script here and a pain pill script there that's oh, what people I see. were okay, doing that's yeah. what they were doing so they made it i mean it's been a while in it's New also York. harder to get certain drugs now because like our doctor is afraid to prescribe certain drugs for fear that it'll send up red flags or something well i go to a pain doctor and uh, i get my pills about every other month and it's fine. She's taking a pain pills because of me. Yeah, right. To, to, to <laughs> double dose. A double dose of, of pain pills. No, but you, but you, you're watched carefully, right? I'm monitored very, now, tell, very carefully. Tell them about, this is very interesting, and 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 there's something wrong about this. Yeah. But, yeah. But you like pot, right? It's my drug of choice. I take it over wine. Well, huh? wine, about the same. Yeah. So she she loves her her pot. I do. Okay, and that's fine, and that's all well and good. But, but, tell but, them what happens with their, your pain medication. This other pain doctor that I used to go to, they, they, every once in a while, they ask you for a urine test because painkillers are registered by DEA because they're narcotic. And I came out and showed that I had marijuana in my system. And I said, and your point is, you know, it's for pain. But they have to report that. So he said that you have to take a choice. It's either this or that. Thank God they bought him out and he retired because I go to a different doctor now. And he doesn't care about the pot. No. Yeah. But that was kind of weird. You know. Very strange. Also, there's a little statistic I gave last night that I thought was, was interesting and weird. And that is uh, Medicare doesn't cover Cialis, which is the boner pill, right? But they do cover penis pumps. <laughs> now... Wouldn't you think that the insertion of a penis pump and all of that is far more expensive than Cialis? I would think so. You know, uh, and and I'm telling you, if I can't get a heart on, I want Cialis. All right, I I don't want to. I'm not putting in a penis pump. <laughs> Excuse me, dear. I've got to go inflate myself. In fact, I don't know. I don't know of any. I don't know of any guys gotten a penis pump. Have you ever asked? No. Well, so there you go. Probably a lot of your friends might have. You know, but uh, what what's wrong? Something like, like scratch. You know, sometimes a well, that's material. Well, I have my back scratcher. <laughs> I love that back scratcher. I bought it for you. Well, I, 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 as I get older, there's certain places I can't get now. Oh, I agree. You know, I, I, there's this dead spot, and that's right in the always, middle. now it's itching now that I'm talking Me about too. it. Me too. But anyway. Anyway. So, uh, what, no one wants to listen to old people. Nobody wants to listen to old people. I've decided that, you know, uh, and I don't know how to get the word out about this program. You know, we got a good program here. You think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it has just it, asking. You, you listen to it every day. I listen to it after Morning Joe. Mm-hmm. I used to listen to it the first thing and then miss Morning Joe. Mm-hmm. So, you're after. I'm after Morning Joe. Yeah. But is it a good show still? Yeah. You say that hesitantly. No, I love your show. You know that. Yeah. Well, that's because you love me. But well, I'm just wondering if, if there's any reason to continue this because we don't have a lot of people listening to it's it. It's up to you. It's what, what floats your boat. If you feel yeah. happy doing it, and you do become a different person when you're on the air. You're nicer. You're, you're, <laughs> you smile. You know what? Yeah. Hmm. So at least you're, for a couple of hours, you're not walking around like this. Mopey Joe. Mopey Joe. 
Yeah. Well, Who I was me. No, I just you know somebody wrote me a thing uh, on uh, YouTube about well, Alec, you want to get a thousand subscribers, but that's not all. You've also got to have two thousand hours a year of people listening to you, or something like that. And they said, and at the rate you're going, you're never going to get there. <laughs> he said that. Yeah. Well, you know, you're a broadcaster. So you have to have a hard yeah, shell. Yeah, but I mean, uh, I've asked people to subscribe, and it's going slow. I mean, we've gotten... I subscribe. We've got oh, almost 200 subscribers since I started right, so asking. So what do you need, 1,000? need 1,000, but then we need to get so many people listening that we have a number, you know, a large... If I, if I got, had 100 people at any one time, that would probably take care of sure. it. Sure. And then you can become a YouTube partner. And maybe get money. Yeah. And I'm like, I, you know, I go back to Facebook because I get more people listening to me on Facebook. What are you looking at? I'm trying to see where your beard is, but it's like so scraggly. Well, I may give up on it. I that. think you should. Uh, maybe. Uh, I think you should. Uh, but as long as it pisses you off, I think I'll keep trying. It's not that it pisses me off. It just looks terrible on you. Hmm? doesn't piss me off. It doesn't really read on the screen. It doesn't read in real either. Well, anyway, I, I, I can feel it. You can feel it, but it's scraggly. It's, it's gross. Shave it off. Yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a David Letterman. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> That'll really make you feel great. And then I'll, I'll come to bed every night and kiss you while you're sleeping. And I'll rest, put a rub, lock on the door. Rub my beard all over you. Um... Should we? No, should I roll no, over? No, no, it's not time yet. Yeah, but I'm sick. My my and my eyes itching again. Uh, I, had, I had an itchy eye last night. Well, anyway, so I so I'm I'm just you know this guy writes me this letter and it it, uh, it made me think and I went yeah what am I doing this for, you know, I mean uh, yeah we got we got some people we get we're getting more people at one time listening to us than we have in the past now, but this whole YouTube thing kind of changed the whole. Well, yeah, it's, di it's different. Yeah, people don't surf through it the way they do on Facebook. Yeah. Now tonight, because she's sick, we probably won't start arguing, and therefore we won't have any people we'll calling. We'll lose all the me. listeners, huh? We'll lose all your listeners. Y yeah, you know, because that's what we want to do. I'm just doing some work here. Uh, I'm rolling. No, no, don't roll over yet. I'm gonna because I'll push you right back. <laughs> you know. Um, by the way, um, uh, last night. Did you hear the show last night? Well, I heard it this morning. After morning, Joe. Boy, I, I couldn't believe Phil. Oh, Phil, right. I'll talk about him because he's going to be calling and he defend himself. And I went, geez, Phil, come on. Yeah, what what that What's with that with the black people in their baggy pants? <laughs> I mean, we live in Harlem. And I've only I only see those baggy pants occasionally. You know, and it's who fashion. Cares? It's fashion for a certain. Um, I think a it, certain no, age group. It, it more than that, it takes talent. And white guys, I don't know how they keep them up. Well, that's it. I've gotten on the subway where you could see the underpants, and then these go like are down below I the think, widest part of the butt. I, I think they're built to be worn that way. In other words, if I bought a pair. I probably couldn't bring them up past that point because that's probably where the crotch is. And, Who it, and knows? then they, it, it, but it, it worked. It, it, and it was a fashion. It's not that much a fashion anymore. Yeah, now everything's going skinny. Yeah, it's gone. It all gone skinny. I don't. I don't see. I. I don't see the baggy pants thing. I haven't seen it around here in a long time. And well, we I live in a, Harlem. No, but I see it a lot. Yeah. 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 On the subway. Yeah. Okay. Let's. let's. Uh, no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> she really wanted. She you really want to. You want to. You want me to go to the phones early so you can go to sleep. Well, I don't feel well. So you don't feel well. I don't feel well. Haven't you ever heard of that old slogan? The, the show, show must, must go, go on. on. <laughs> I'd like to know who invented that. But it's your show, not mine. Do you know? Because all my life I have lived by that. You know, uh, when somebody calls me, I'm saying, eh, "I'm not going to do the show tonight. I'm sick." And I, I understand that. You know, you're sick. You don't do it, right? I could be dying and I would do the show because I grew up with the ethic, the showbiz ethic, that the show must go, go on. on. And I got to tell anybody who get takes the night off because they're sick, I'm the dumb one, okay? Because I've 
I've lived by this credo, and who knows why the show must go on, <laughs> you know. Now, if, if I had an audience out there that was paying good money to get it, it to w listen to this, let's say they were paying 20 bucks like when you go to a movie, right? Then it's a different thing. But, um, oh, oh, by the way, speaking of movies, uh, who, who do you think is going to win the Academy Award this year for Best Picture? I don't think it's going to be... Um the the shape of water, no. although I, that's really my first choice. It'll probably be. Uh, Would you say the one the the? I think what was it called? Your uh, Get Out. Get Out. I think Get Out's going to win. I want to watch that. Let again. me explain something to you about the Academy Awards. That uh, was very interesting. No, this is very interesting. Yeah. It's not just your vote. What it is is for Best Picture. All the others you vote for like Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, and so on. Right? And that's it. Cut and dried. Person who gets the most votes wins. wins. When it comes to best picture, you rank all of them. All of them. So you put your first choice At as one, yeah. and then two, then three, then four, and whatever, depending on how your, many. I think there's up there to are ten. like about eight this year. Yeah. And, and then you send your ballot in. Then they take and they say, this person's number one was here and it was here. And uh, then there was this and there was that and so on. And until one of these pictures gets to 50% in the total vote, nobody, nobody wins. Do you understand? It's called preferential voting. All right. And what happens is, is they then, when they get, have, have made, you know, added them all up and they find out, well, which one is number one and which one's number two and which one's number three and four and five, if the top one doesn't have 50 per, 51%, that's it, they will then take away from, I think, the bottom number and, and bring them. it up and add it to see if that adds to the percentage. Then they'll take the next one and add the percentage in. Yeah, to break the tie. Yeah, and uh, uh, until... Um, 51%. It's, it's, it's something like that. It's very confusing. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the person who get, got the most number one votes wins. Yeah. That's probably how Moonlight won last year. You wondered how that picture won. That's probably how it won. Hmm. And some people are saying that uh, Shape of Water and Two Billboards are going to negate each other. Could be. Right? Yeah. And Get Out is well, going to jump to the to front. The top. Well, we'll see you on Sunday. But you're not watching it, so... Uh, I'll let you know on Monday. No, well, maybe I'll watch it. No, you said you're not watching oh, it. Oh, I can't watch it the, now? The <laughs> channel is is I, I can't watch it. I see. To okay. you. Well, here's the other here's the other thing. Uh, the uh, the best picture this year is going to be <laughs> I think that's great. It's going to be given out <laughs> again. Again by Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway, Take who you two. may remember Take last two. year um, uh, uh, They gave him the wrong envelope. They gave him the wrong right. envelope. So he pulls it open, and everybody in the world is thinking that it's going to be such and such. Yeah, I can't remember what And he, he read such and such. Yep. Because they put that in by mistake. And they're all coming up on the stage. Yeah, you know, they're congratulating, giving their speech, and then they come out and or, say... No, or was it that he actually got the right... No, he didn't get the right envelope, did he? he they gave him the wrong envelope. And then she, he pulled it out, and she made the announcement. So all these people are up on the stage... And while they're up on the stage, they had to come out and say, uh-uh, we're well, wrong. There's we're a sorry. problem here. <laughs> it's the wrong one. Now, but I can't remember, did, did, did Warren Beatty, did they get the right envelope and he read the wrong name? Because no, he opened up the envelope and he gave it to her and she read the name. But they had handed them the wrong envelope. So I'm sure that person was fired. Well, whatever. <laughs> I'm sure that person was fired. I, I, I seem to remember it a little differently that she actually fucked up. That she was reading from the list. Yeah, she read from the card when she pulled it up, but anyway, it was the wrong one. They fucked up last year. Yeah. So this year, they're coming. Take they brought two. them back to do a, a make a good. A duo. A make good. Yeah, I think and, that's cute. And there's a rumor, uh, and let's see if it's true, that he's going to open up the envelope and say, and the winner is Gone with the Wind. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, uh, that, that you know that yeah, I think that's nice of them to bring them back yeah. and, and let them make fun out of the of the okay it's Wait, time. no no it's not time yet <laughs> you really want to he's, don't you he's like sucking the blood out of me you you, you he, desperately he's like sucking the blood out he doesn't give me an inch well I'll give you 
I'll give you nine inches. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We saw a documentary tonight on Harvey Weinstein, done by the BBC. <laughs> yeah. And they do good stuff because they're... Man, yeah. was he fucked. He spent most of his time dealing with all with allegations all these years and, and paying, paying off, off and, and and paying news people off so they wouldn't print it and, then he and ha- crying no he learned no, the ability he, to cry yeah, don't do, don't write don't this do article this little, my family tears 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 yeah yeah uh but he but it also said that he went out eventually and hired uh something called black something it's a it's an israeli black ops outfit. Yeah, they find dirt on people. Yeah, and and uh, he hired them to come over here and uh, be his little army, as it were, to protect him against all these assaults and everything that people were saying about him. And to this day, I don't think he has apologized for any of them. No, you saw all the things that were... He de- he's denied them. Denied everything. She just sent it for the money. They were all consensual. But here's the thing with Harvey, and, and this is what bothered me the most. He never changed his method of operation. Why should he? When an open bathrobe no, no, and a fat would, he, body. He would show up. He would. It, a woman would come in. He'd excuse himself. He'd go to the next room, come back in a bathrobe. Not even tied, just hanging there in his big fat And one ass. woman described it by saying that she said to him, him Harvey, you're disgusting. Harvey, you should be ashamed of yourself. It doesn't, it's not pretty. It's not pretty, <laughs> something like that. And then he started crying, saying, you don't like me because I'm fat. fat. <laughs> well, that's, just, that's for starters. Right. <laughs> it also could be that winning personality. Because people then people who worked with him described him as being pretty much a bully. Yeah, as, they were afraid of him. They, yeah. you, know, you get all these young kids that are just so, starting out. You know, if, if he had been a nice guy, I think a lot of people would have been ready to defend him. Maybe. You know? Uh, it, it, it's when you're a bad guy. Like I, I think Ryan Seacrest is probably okay because nobody around, everybody around him is defending him. Yeah, and he's still in the air and everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, you're, I'm you're, you're really determined. We'll just leave an empty, uh, an empty box Let over there. Say look goodbye at the, over look here. Look at this. See, she's coming from one frame, and See now she's other. coming into the other. Move down. Uh, gee, well, do you mind if I at least? Uh, 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 there we go. Okay. Uh, what? Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Oh, okay, yeah. call in, please. No, because, the phones yes. aren't open yet. Well, well, I think you should open them. <laughs> Make me. Here, let me do it. See how many people? Look at that. See? See, when you're on, <laughs> there are a lot of people watching. So, you know. Let me see here. Where do I want to go? Oh, there I want to go. Do you know today I was doing the Michael Snyder movie reviews, and then I we stopped it, and I had to do some stuff to fix it up and get it working and so on. And, and your point is? And I erased the whole thing. We had to redo it. Are you serious? Yeah, that's how bad I've been lately. Alex, it's just age. Don't worry. No, well, I know it's just age. <laughs> that's the problem. It was either one thing or another. It was age. Yeah. And, and then last night, I, I was fucking up like crazy posting the shows. I don't know. I, so I, I'm, uh, I, I think maybe I should retire from this. Whatever, what, whatever makes you happy. I just don't want to come home and have you sitting in your underwear with, a, with your bathrobe and a drool coming out of your mouth. Well, I'm I not, mean, you're still wearing the pajamas I, I, from like five days ago. When have you ever ago? come home and I was wearing a bathrobe? <laughs> well, your pajamas. I don't wear a bathrobe. Your ba- your pajamas. Well, these are not pajamas. You told me they're not pajamas. What are they? Pajama They're bottoms. pajamas. <laughs> they really are. Jammies. Yeah. Lounging pants. Something I learned in television. By the way, the lines are open. Who cares? Please call uh, Jeff, uh, uh, Brian. What was really uh, amazing uh, that you may not have known is that um, uh, on television, uh, it doesn't matter what you wear. Below your waist. top, uh, below the waist, because yeah. uh, if if you were to look at a lot of people on television, they're wearing jeans. Yeah, because nobody, no, they really never photographed them. So when I would except get, for some of the news people, now they stand up. Well, when I would get dressed for like the show I did uh, called uh, Log On, Log 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 On TV, that was what it was called. Uh, I I would uh, you know I'd wear a nice jacket and wear a nice shirt maybe I'd even have a tie on uh, and jeans, jeans you know because nobody really pays attention to what goes on below there oh here here comes John Pol- uh, Perulis I have to remember how to pronounce his name 
Uh, John is a uh, is a hey. newer a newer caller, hey, John. but uh, he's been. He's Hi, good. I'm so glad to go away. I want to see both of you. Oh, oh, really? I'll be going in about a minute and a half. Yeah, she's she's not feeling well tonight. And he well, dragged me in here. Remember what Billy Crystal said: "It's better to look good than to feel good." Oh, well, that's yeah. true. I mean, <laughs> better to look good than to feel good. That that that's good. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I've always wanted to see a show on Broadway. Yeah. 500, 500 nights or five hundred something. I don't know. I never. I don't. I'm not a fan of Billy Crystal. I like him. I'm. I'm never. I'm, he's never. He's always kind of. I don't know. It, the only thing he did that I ever really liked was that show, The Comedians. Did you ever see that? Yes, was, that was no. great. With yeah. what's Josh his name? Gabb. Josh Gabb. Very good show. But they only and did uh, one year. FX canceled it after the first season. It was I went, great. It was terrific. Just great. It was great. It was wonderful. So, they right. forced the two of them to work together. Yeah. And, you know, it, just the intermingling. Yeah, and... Well, the, the preface of the show is that uh, the only way Billy Crystal can get a sitcom is if he works with this guy. <laughs> oh, no. And, yeah. and so it's, right. it's like they don't get along. They don't like get along. oil and water. But they have to work together. But it made, it made for a very funny show. It did. And after a year, uh, it's one season, they, I think Who they canceled it. Who was carrying it? FX. Maybe yeah. it should go to Netflix. They seem to be buying everything up They now. seem to be buying everything, yeah. <laughs> They're going to become the world yeah. leader. Is, is, is there the even movie? an HBO anymore? Yeah. yeah. Like, really? What? An a, no HBO? No, I thought, no. There's, still, there, there's, there's an they're, HBO. They're, but, they're not but, keeping up. They, they, you, they you know, can't keep up yeah. with Netflix. And then when they put a show on, you got to watch it each week. You no, can't just do it right. all at once. Oh. You know? Well, I, I binge watch. I when do I do too. those shows, I watch every single episode and I get through... You know, uh, uh, like Narcos, like in one week. Yeah, yeah. We did, okay? We never watched, ba what was it called? Getting Breaking Bad? Right. And, and then when we, they were closing it. We binged it. We binged it, it watched five years in what, less than two uh, something weeks? Something like 63 episodes in less than two weeks. And we finished the last one the night before they were running the last one. I mean, it was perfect. And when we got to that and watched it, we were upset because there were commercials and we they had commercial <laughs> breaks. We're so used to just flipping through. You know. Yeah, right. But we, uh, that's how we, we binge watched uh, Breaking Bad. And then she binge watched a, uh, what was it, Turkish telenovella? It was a, Tur it was a Turkish telenovella with 50 episodes. Yeah. It was yeah. when I was sick and I just, well, you know, I just thought it'd be like seven or eight. And Alex looked. Hey, I, I didn't think I was going to like it, but I went to CBS online and I binge watched all of Star Trek Discovery. That is a good show. It's a great show. Fantastic yeah. acting. And they really ramped up the whole Star Trek narrative and made it watchable again. Well, you know? yeah, well they created a new kind of narrative, I think. And yeah. I, I yeah. thought it was a very good show. Uh, and um, uh, oh, what's, what's funny, though, is that... Uh, uh, the guy who played uh, the uh, captain on that show, yeah, uh, uh, is in this picture called "The Death of Stalin," and he plays the head of the <laughs> he plays the head of the military. Well, he plays all kinds of bad yeah, guys. He yeah. he was that uh, oh, oh Lieutenant Trevor and uh, Mel Gibson's uh, film uh, Patriot. Remember, he plays no, the I English I bad guy who, bad that, who kills everybody, that burns him alive. Wow, and stuff. He's he's great for yeah, that. But that's it's, it's a good show, and that and the uh, actress yeah. who does who's the star of that show uh, oh. is, I think, a real find. I think she's just terrific. And she supposedly was on Walking uh, 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 Walking Dead. Was where she came from. Israel yeah, that's right. That Sonika Martin Green, yeah. great actress. Yeah. Very good. Okay, Very good. I'm going to say hello to Phil and good night to everyone. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, don't go. I'm don't tired. Go. Uh, she next, has to go. Next week I'll stay longer. It's, you know, right. it's three hours later for them. No. Yeah. One yeah. year yeah. I'll right. stay. In California. One, one I'll stay the right. whole thing. Yeah. All right. And you'll stay for the whole show. I'll oh try. yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, good night. Sure. That's a, that's that's a po real possibility. Here, put that chair back where. Hey, hey Phil. Phil, it's great to see you. I I left a little Bye. present for you, on Alex's uh, Skype thing. I I made a link to a video. So if you want to show that video, it's about guns. I, I think you're gonna like. Is 
I, I don't see those links on Skype or YouTube. I, I can't seem to get to them. Oh, let me pull up. No, uh, well, I'd have to get off of this one. Well, don't, yeah. uh, just worry, worry about it later. You, you, uh, hello, oh. Rob Alfano. Yep. How are you? It's the voice of Gabnet, ladies and gentlemen, Rob Alfano. And tonight your mic sounds just fine. Oh, he's got a cool T-shirt. I got something. Well, he's got a Yankees T-shirt. What, what do you have? Wait a minute. John's going out. Sweatshirt, to... actually. Huh? It's a sweatshirt. I'm sweatshirt. wearing a sweatshirt tonight. Yeah. Ah, I was going to wear a sweatshirt tonight. Is it but... cold? Oh, it's miserable. We had this nor nor'easter here today, as you did in New York. Uh, I was supposed to drive to Baltimore today and canceled it because it's just it's too fucking crazy. <sighs> Now, why do they call it a nor'easter? They mean north, northern eastern, right? You would think. Yeah. Well, oh. People in Maine. Uh, oh. <laughs> hey, this is not just any Red Sox hat. I don't know if you could see it. I, I'll hold it up to the camera. Do you see that? Wait a minute. No, we can't see it. Here. To John. To J oh, to John. Yeah. From who? Trot Nixon. Trot, okay. Who That's beat your guy's ass in 2004. We shamed you. We killed the Bambino and ended your fucking dynasty, man. By the way, <laughs> there's a very, in, there's a, <laughs> there's a very uh, interesting documentary that I started watching, but I haven't really gotten into it yet. That's on my, um, PB, it's on the PBS channel, or it's at least it's on the Channel 13 channel here. Yeah. And it's the story of Babe Ruth and the kid that he visited in the hospital. Oh, Did you ever wow. hear that story? That yeah. classic story that he showed him. And I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit a, hit a ball, a home run just for you. And then he mm -hmm. went out and he did it. And yeah. and it's like legend. And they had the the guy. He's dead now. But audio from him telling the story and his uh, his uh, son telling the story. Wow. And, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, you all know, but Babe Ruth was a Red Sox first before he. <laughs> Left for the empire of evil. Did uh, he promise more than one home run? Uh, no, Nanette. Uh, uh, oh, I, th I thought no, no, Nanette. So he sold uh, Babe to the Yankees. Oh, I thought in that uh, the kid thing that Babe Ruth actually promised more than one home run. I think he promised him only one home run. Oh, all right. I think. Uh, I know he. he Maybe it was a movie. He, he, there's there's was, a movie about uh, it too. He gave him yeah. two balls. Yankee. No, that's the Lou Gehrig story. No, the the Babe Ruth movie is the Babe Ruth story. Yeah, and um, it stars William Bendix that's as right. Babe Ruth. Oh, love Riley. And, like and, Riley. and 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 uh, it's got my Michael favorite Hill. ending ever in a movie. I used to do a whole bit about this on the air, in which uh, at the very end of the movie, they're they're. They're, they're taking uh, Babe Ruth down a hallway on a gurney to an operating room to give him an operation, which might save his life or it may not. But either way, it's yeah. going to, it's good. they're going to find something out about medicine or something because of Babe Ruth. And they're wheeling him down. And outside the window of the hospital is a group of boys singing, Take me out to the ball game. As they're wheeling him down the hallway. Take me out with the crowd. And then all of a sudden they go into a montage. And there are like jets flying overhead. Or, or planes flying overhead. And then a field, a baseball field. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. And... There are kids uh, sliding into, into home plate, and there are kids batting their ball, and there's a kid there with his nose up to the chest of, a, of an umpire, po poking him in the chest, yelling at him. And the announcer goes, and that day, Babe Ruth did more for humanity than he had done. And his legend will remain, and they're saying, take me out to the ball game. His legend will remain as long as there is a bat a boy and a ball. Scene. Uh, uh, that, yeah. that is my favorite ending to any movie ever. Yes, the giving. Hey, what's yeah, that? Yeah, given day. Denny Lehane, you know, uh, famous uh, writer from Boston, mm -hmm. uh, uh, gets a lot of films out there, you know, like Shutter Island, mm -hmm. so forth. That's all his stories. 
Has that, does anybody know why they haven't made a film about this? Babe Ruth is in this story. This is about the 1917 Boston police strike. Every single, well, mostly every single cop uh, went out on strike. You listen well, Yeah, to because film. Babe Ruth uh, played for Boston. Yeah, no, this they, is a story. This is a fantastic story. Well, the Babe story. played for Boston, why didn't, didn't he? Yeah, but, but why didn't they now? Wait a minute. Did he play for Boston? Did he play for Boston remember. after the Yankees or before the Yankees? I think maybe before, before and after. Before, before. No, not before. Well, I think they. Who was the team that uh, Babe wanted to manage? And he was hired by after he was he was pretty much done, but he didn't want to retire. He went to another team, and they told him they'd let him manage, but that never really. They just wanted to get him there to to fill put asses in seats. But he was a he he was he was born in Baltimore, like right near the ballpark there. Yeah. Um, he played in Boston until the owner of the Red Sox, who uh, at the time who was doing shows, he, he was putting on plays. He That's wanted right. That's right. to do the play No No Nanette. And he sold the Bambino to the Yankees, and that's where the curse of the Bambino came from. Uh, because once he sold uh, Babe Ruth, they, the uh, the Red Sox... Uh, they were never won until a few years ago, years. right? Hey, it worked for 80 years, so it must have been a good curse, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but, <laughs> no, but, but when, when the... When the, when the, uh, when the uh, uh, Yankees finally dropped him, where did he go? Well, that's the thing. He Some team hired him to be a player manager... Mm-hmm. But it turned out it was more of a publicity stunt, and he got it. You know, again, it's I think it's in that movie, the the uh, the Bambino there that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. If not, it's in a documentary I've seen on the Babe. Might be in the documentary that I saw on Ruth, where he was just being exploited at that point. They were using him for his popularity to put asses in seats but he was ineffective and they weren't really letting him manage the team like he like he had wanted to do he wanted to stick around and be a, a manager and they didn't want him to be a manager you of any of the uh umpires like al clark uh he, he was the longest running uh mlb empire umpire uh he uh was also jewish uh you, you ever hear of him no no. But then no. again, I don't no. follow baseball that much, but I do love the history of baseball. That's the yeah. funny part about it. I love he, he gave me a shot of him and Billy Martin <laughs> and signed it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Do you take that picture? No. No. Uh, this is uh, this is I was still in diapers. <laughs> hey, you beat me out on props, Phil. I thought my my personally signed Trot Nixon Red Sox hat from 2004 but yeah. you, you just trumped me. Uh, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was in my office and I can't you, but I won't trump you. Wait a minute. <laughs> Listen to Rob. He's trying to say Don't something. Don't make me go down to my office and grab my signed Mariano Rivera baseball. All right. Well, don't okay, let me let no don't let me go me. back go to ahead. my uh, to my, uh, my my storage yeah. locker in California and get out my hockey stick signed by all of the San Jose Sharks. You, you know. think that storage locker is still there? Oh, yeah, it is. Damien no. runs the storage <laughs> locker. <laughs> oh, you think he dumped it all, and then he's just sending he's just me a charging. bill every month. I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, uh, no, but Damien did a really nice thing for me. He emptied out my old locker and yeah. put, put me in his company's lockers and uh, saved me 200 bucks a month. The, nice. What happened when I first got it, it was like $180, $160 a month. And by the time the years had gone on, all of a sudden I'm getting a bill for $365 a month. And that's mm-hmm. how they get you. Don't ever, this is my, I'm telling you, and even Damien, if he were able to call or is listening, probably agrees with me. Don't ever put stuff in storage because you'll I, never I, take it out. my house. Uh, I went from a two-car garage to an apartment ha- a building yeah. with uh, just an underground parking thing. Yeah. So I had to find a place for my motorcycle. Yeah. So I, I rented a uh, storage unit mm-hmm. that I could drive the motorcycle into that was convenient to get to. Yeah. That's what I my vet it's gone up in price and it's gone up in price and, and yeah. gone up in price. Well, I, if I if I had money to invest, I yeah. would invest in a storage facility. 
Yeah, they make sense. I mean, there's no way you're going to lose money on a storage facility. And most people, and what? Low maintenance. Low maintenance. Uh, no. All you have to do is just collect the checks while the stuff sits there. You don't have to clean out the storage hey, lockers. I, I got a story for you. I got a story for you. I rent a storage locker for my business at Joe Gabarino's Marin Resource and Recovery Center. Yeah. You know, it's our, you know, we in the East Coast, I grew up in the East Coast, we used to call it the dump, but yeah. now it's a recycling center. So I, I was there the first time and I was going to check out the prices for the storage locker and see if there was good security because it's in right near San Quentin. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of a dicey area, right? Right. So I go to where the uh, storage locker is and the ground is shaking. I mean, you know, like there's some kind of big machinery coming my way or something and I see all this diesel smoke around the corner and then right coming at me is a goddamn Sherman tank from World War II. I'm not kidding you. It's a Sherman, and it starts rumbling, and there's a kid in, you know, driving it. And uh, Look, then I realized, oh, man, that Joe Gabarino is a World War II buff. He buys all this stuff. Every 4th of July, he has a big parade in, in San Rafael or Nevada. And so I just got a big bang out of that. I went to the office, and I told the lady, I said, hey, okay, I'm going to have my storage locker here. I love your security. I saw the Sherman tank crawling down, and it made me feel safe. Wow. You know what scares me about these lockers is that yeah. people can put anything they want in there. A lot of it is combustible. If you're going to, you know, they might store paint. They might store stuff. I do believe, I do, I, do, that, I do believe that the people who run them, and I think, you know, Damien isn't on the show tonight, so he can't. he's yeah, the expert yeah. on it, but I don't, I think they do check to make sure that people aren't putting combustibles in those there's lockers. There's no way, in the lockers that I'm in, there's no way they could figure it out. They don't watch you. You, you drive through the gate, you open they, up your locker. You hey, well, uh, Phil, what about, I mean, you're a police officer. The the uh, fire department has a machine, especially the investigative branch, called a sniffer. Yeah. And what that sniffer does is they put it in a fire scene and it, after the it, fire. it analyzes all the compounds right. after the fire after the fire <laughs> all right yeah. i'm talking about i don't want the fire i want to be you know, before no, the but couldn't they just uh put the sniffer near a storage locker my, my storage locker has a vent in it so they could just put it near the vent well, all i'm saying is i don't know i, I should i should probably ask damien or maybe damien can can write us uh, when he listens to this show I, and how do, what do you do to make sure that people don't put combustibles in there because well, I, and I, can, I, I drive what, past what, some of what, these what, they got their door okay. open yeah yeah and uh, they're, they're rob, stacked rob to is the ceiling. talking rob is talking mm -hmm. Oh, last, yeah. uh, last summer, I rented a 10 by 20 and uh, put my car in there because I didn't have a garage. And you put your own, they don't ask you to buy locks from them where they have a master key. You, you right. I bought really nice locks. I had the only keys. They couldn't get into it. I can tell you that as I would drive in, how many times you could see that people use them to do business out of. Right. You know, there's a guy who's got a garage and he's doing <laughs> yeah. mechanic work. That's true. <laughs> you know, I've seen homeless people, you know, they're not supposed to, but, uh, you know, they're they're in the bathroom, they're they're sleeping there, they've got the locker. Not the uh, one I was I was in a public storage place and you couldn't even get in the front door unless you had the, uh, the code. Well, yeah, so. these people it, rent the made. storage room and then they turn it into their uh, abode. Rather than sleeping under well, a, I, I, uh, yeah. a freeway, I have a um, we have a, a storage unit here in New York that we're currently paying five hundred dollars a month for. But Ooh, that's nice <laughs> that. But that was for all these photographs this woman took. That, uh, but she left us one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, so we can afford. Can I talk? <laughs> Yeah. But, so I, I can afford it without paying the you know, without worrying about the rent because I've got like, you know, seventy five thousand dollars of her money to take. Now, care this five hundred a month, is it because it's uh, hermetically sealed? It's uh... no, no, it's because it's in New it's in it's in downtown New York. Oh, in Manhattan. Uh OK. And you can't charge the uh, uh, rent to the uh, to the thing and put it in one of the bedrooms and, and then charge the estate. Uh, for that bedroom, uh, you know, rent. That's an interesting <laughs> idea. Listen, I got to tell you, we, in case people don't like, know what I'm talking about, right let, now, let me explain this. In case, a good idea. in case people don't know what I'm <laughs> what I'm what I'm talking about, we, uh, uh, I and another guy, 
were willed uh, this woman's entire photographic collection, and she was a very good photographer. And, for, uh, and then given $150,000 split between the two of us to promote and to archive and do whatever with her photographs. Um, suddenly we realized when we, we took like a guy took like two boxes of her, of her negatives and stuff and, and sent them, I guess maybe it was to Europe or someplace to get Digi them, to get them digitized. And they send them back and I, I hate to, sh I, I can't even show you one of the photographs, but it's just a fat guy on a ladder with no clothes on. Uh, <laughs> And the That's rest of it is like, like most of it is like, uh, you know, dogs and puppies and just street stuff and it, nothing you really. Before you sent them? I think the the most the the <laughs> best the best per, one that I've seen the one that at least has a, a personality in it is a picture of Bill Maher, and that's about that's about it. Now I don't know. There are still. Thousands of these pictures, and what do we do? Do we do we digitize all of them and then go through no. them? Yeah, no. Get a you got a uh, like a light table or oh and a loop. god, I Just put uh, things no, that, on the that, light table. I'd rather I'd rather one. shoot myself than have to go through two three thousand slides it looking at them through a loop and a light table. It doesn't Can take I, that long. I, I have a question for you. Then what what are you really to do with these photos? Charge what? rent. Well, uh, <laughs> it, it, five it, it, pay, gone. pay rent. Them, are you to, are you supposed to monetize them? Can you do that? I can. You want? I can you... do any. Uh, I own half of them. He owns the other half. I can do anything with his half. He can do anything with my half. That's the deal we have with each other. Have an exhibit. Well, wait a minute. Know, Hold on a second. On well, show. he wants to do exhibits. I I think there's yeah. maybe a book in in some of these photos. But I get all the photos from the first half of her life and he gets all the photos from the second half of her life and the first half of her life contains photos that were taken when I was doing Midnight Blue and when she was working on the show so it's kind of an archive also of my work as well uh, and so what I do but we haven't gotten to those photos we haven't found them yet you know we haven't figured out which ones are them uh, we have some frame pictures that are some of them like we have a picture of uh, in drag Harvey Firestein uh when he was a drag queen when he worked in uh, when he was worked as a performer doing drag uh and there are a lot of other great pictures okay but it, it, to go through these i mean it's just going to be daunting and and i don't i don't know if i'm ready for the exercise you know i you know, I, you might find something really interesting. Well, I'm there. sure some, might find something that will blow your mind. Oh, I'm you know? sure there's some stuff in there that will, but we've got to get through it. That's the problem. I have, so <laughs> I, I'm entering. Uh, you know, it's my uh, next Wednesday is my uh, next uh, photo club contest. Yes. And so I printed today two photographs that I was going to enter: one for color, one for black and white. The the problem is, and I need to ask you why this happened. I had a I had a photo of two elephant seals kissing one another. Uh, on the screen, it was in one direction. When I printed it, it was mirrored. I don't understand why. Uh, Th that shouldn't be. It's yeah, probably, it's, so, for instance, uh, yeah, this yeah. is the shot. Yeah. Uh, the seals were reversed. God, that's hot. Screen. That's hot. Uh, what? The, the, yeah. the seals were reversed on the screen. That's a good shot. I well, like that. Alex says yeah. it's hot. Maybe I should. Uh, uh, no, I said it's it's hot. It's hot. Like the kissing. See, it's hot. Oh, oh, anyway, oh that kind of hot. Look, we don't want an ex exhibition of your photographs tonight. This is the other one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, like, hey, this guy's good. Those yeah. are the Roger Dean. This guy's thing. good, man. So, uh, anyway. You know who Roger Dean is? No. Uh, Roger Dean is the guy that did all the Yes albums. Oh, it looks like a Roger Dean shot to me. Really, I uh, this with the smoke and the mountains. It, it looks very Yes. Like if you put the Yes logo there, you'd oh, have an. Yeah, album. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Uh, you know, I I met a famous uh, rock photographer. When I first moved to San Francisco, and I didn't know who he was. His name was Jim Marshall. Yeah. And he invited me over mm -hmm. to his apartment when he was living on Union Street. And uh, he had all these album covers on the wall. 
And I and and I, I said, what, why do you have those album covers on the wall? He says, no, those are pictures of album covers. So uh, I said, why would you have the picture of the album cover on the wall? He says, well, I took them. And it was the it was Janis Joplin and the Great well, Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, you know, uh, uh, a 1963 shot of... Uh, of uh, what's his name, uh, Bob Dylan rolling a tire, and then uh, pictures of <laughs> Ash, uh, giving the finger, and, uh, and he was yeah. rolling a tire before he's rolling a stone. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you know, I, I didn't know who he was because I met him at a friend of mine's house, and he says, "Oh, I'm a photographer." Oh, he also shot the last Beatles concert at uh, wow at uh, Gold uh, at Candlestick Park, but uh, yeah. what. Uh, happened was i said to him uh, what do you do he says i'm a photographer i said can you show me how to use this camera he says sure come on over <laughs> so that's how i met him mm -hmm. wow okay. amazing story well that's boring uh let me see here <laughs> hey, you know I, which is boring is the way i met you <laughs> how did you meet me uh, you were begging for a ride uh you were working at wplj yeah, had, you, you were the electricity went out in your building and you couldn't get your car out of the garage and you needed a ride home. So I went down to the studio. Was I stupid enough Not to take air, it? He begged I gave him a ride home and uh, him and Naomi. Oh, no, no. Naomi was home. So I give him a ride home and uh, he invites me up for breakfast and Naomi made us breakfast. OK. And, and that's how I met you. You mean I literally took a car ride from a total stranger? Total stranger. Who, who listened to me, worse than that, listened to me on the fucking radio and wanted to <laughs> drive me home? Man, yeah. what was I thinking? Yeah, well, hey, you were adventurous. No, I was thinking I was stoned all the time is what I think. <laughs> well, you could have been. And uh, But anyway, uh, that that's how I met you. Well, that's how and, you, that's how you and then it. you got me the gravitas, and I got the morning show at my college radio station because uh, I had met you. Oh, because you had <laughs> met me, that, right? Yeah. Well, you could say, "Hey, I know Alex Bennett." And no, no, no. I told them that I went down and I, I met him. They said, "That's great. Okay, you got the morning show." Wow. I, the only guy that would be there at seven in the morning. <laughs> God, those were the days when I was something, you know. Yeah. Anyway. I, I, and then, uh, oh, don't go there. Had, and the uh, also you're had, still carrying on. You got to be like, um, uh, oh, spaceman Lee. Oh, and, you know, and Red Sox pitcher. Yeah, yeah. I, go, I, know I, say, I don't. I don't. We're back to baseball. Sox, and you've lost. Minute, you've lost story. me now. Yeah. Bill Lee yeah. just set a, a record he, uh, when he turned 65 some years ago, yeah. and I saw this game. I saw the game. It was. It set a Guinness Book of Records. He was the oldest professional ball player mm -hmm. to uh appear in a game he, he hit a home run and he ran some bases and he pitched and he did his weird sky thing he's got this weird arcing pitch and he, he actually struck guys out on it so alex never say you're finished you can set a guinness record here oh yeah you could yeah. be the longest broadcasting stupidest guy. man in radio he he just kept going when he should have quit <laughs> Yeah, no. you know, there are guys, there are guys in show business. Hi, Kevin. By the way, Kevin, I don't know, but your your camera the last couple of nights seems like you have some schmutz on it or some. Maybe it needs to be clean. <laughs> the lens needs to be cleaned. It's because you're you have a light. Oh, the light. Oh, now you're fine. Oh, that's what it was. It was the light. OK, now you're fine. No, here, here here's the thing that certain people there was a time where people would go. When I reach uh, 65, I'm retiring. Remember yeah. that? Retirement age was 65. And one of the guys who said that was Jimmy Cagney. Hmm. And 65 hit. That was it. No more movies. Finally, when wait he a was, minute. Was, he was in one uh, well, movie. Wait a minute. At uh, 80, he with, went, uh, at 80, yeah. 80, he went back and did Ragtime. Ragtime. Because time, his right. health was kind of failing, and his doctor suggested it would be good for him to do a movie. And so that's why he went back and did one. But, you know, to him, his yeah. idea was, hey, you worked for 65 years. I worked my ass off in movies, tap dancing, you dirty rat, you know, that kind of shit. And now it's time for me to get that well-deserved retirement that I'm owed. And just went into retirement. So did quite a few other people. There was a guy, what was the name? Of, what was his name? Uh, Kay Kaiser. 
Uh, he had the the uh, uh, he, he, right. had, he had an orchestra, yeah. and he did a thing on radio called Kate Kaiser's College of Musical Knowledge. Yeah, right? it was a weird show. I, was, I saw clips it, of it. His somewhere. radio, and he did some yeah. movies and stuff like that. And today, this sounds like not much, but he said, "I'm going to make a million dollars, and the minute I make a million dollars, I'm quitting." And he made the million bucks, and he quit. That was it. <laughs> Bye. See you later, folks. I, you know, some people say, as did Cagney, this is my job, and now I'm 65 and I'm retiring. Who's right? still working here? Uh, uh, John, you still working? Yeah. Kevin, uh, you're on disability, right? But you work. You, I was you're retired. You're retired. Yeah. And uh, how, old, how old are you, Kevin? What's that? How old are you? 62. 62. Well, 61. Yeah. So you shouldn't have to retire yet, right? No, I shouldn't have to. No, but we all have to. I tried to. to get a job, but... Yeah. Turn up your microphone a little bit. You can stand to have your microphone. They don't want old farts like me. They don't want old farts. Oh, me either. You know. Uh, I tried. But... All right, I'm getting out classed here with the microphone shit. You know, I can go uh, and get my uh, AKG broadcast. Mic, Listen, you know, I've so got... I'm... I, you know, it, it, this is an AKG <laughs> that I use here, which I think sounds pretty good. Yeah, you know, but it does. It sounds great. But I, well, I, I think part of it is his voice. <laughs> well, the re no, the reason I used it is we used it at the TV show. When we were doing the TV show. We used an AKG. This, I, we ha I had the, it's the other microphone here when we were doing um, uh, what do you call it with the your play, wife? Play, no, play TV. Oh, play years ago and then when i went to that studio the studio was where i brought all that equipment from play tv hey i saw you and so play then i TV. bought this one to match that one and i like it what did you I, no i saw you at a convention in san jose, san jose i think yeah. uh, and you were on play tv right and uh i i just w was standing right there watching the show so I, mm -hmm. I wasn't interacting with you but did you notice that that show is just like this one play tv yeah uh I, did they use uh, well, Alex, a web webinar wait, wait, format like Alex Skype or played, something? I don't Alex remember. played a uh, segment like an hour. He put it on. Yeah. on no, 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 no. It, it was different. I sat there. I talked to a camera. I didn't take phone calls. I had guests that came in. You just said yeah. that it was the same Phil because I was griping about the same shit that I'm griping about now. Oh, yeah, the same griping. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. See, the, you could say the Guinness again. record that way. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, he was moaning and boning about his his health and his and his this and his that. It's the same same thing, same maladies. <laughs> Some night I'll just run that as our first hour of the show or something. But, you should. It was great. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. No, wait a minute. Trouble is when I ran it, I've got to cut out stuff because there's some music in there that did not make, uh, um, uh, who do you call it? Uh, uh, the censors. Uh, YouTube happy. Yeah. Hey, YouTube gets really pissy about that. They gave me a red flag because I do live broadcasting on uh, YouTube. Other places. Well, a too, lot right? of song, a lot of music. They they say it's okay for you to use it. Uh, it's just you you cannot get any monetary benefit out of the show. Right. So yeah. Uh, no. So and then other times it says it's. Uh, uh, I got one the other day. I think it was for that particular thing. And the red flag mm -hmm. read thusly: um, uh, because of this is copyrighted material, uh, you can't monetize the show, but you can play the music. However, this program cannot be shown in these territories, and it. Almost uh, every uh. country in the world it couldn't be shown in. So, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to put up a, t a piece of uh, video that can't be shown elsewhere. So if I edit the thing, maybe I could run it one night just for the hell of it. Yeah. We had chroma key in back of us and everything. It was really cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just want the for the short time that I was at the convention and you were broadcasting. We had a, they had a, a weird kind of device for doing chroma key. What it was, was we had, I had this, this, what we call hollow, it was called hollow cloth behind me, right? And what yeah. you did on the camera in front of the lens is you put a ring that had blue lights right. all around circular it. circular light ring. And yeah. then it would reflect huh? to the, the wall, the, the hollow screen in back of you, and that would make it blue to the camera. Not yeah. to anybody else. You couldn't see it, except in, if you, unless you were looking through the camera. And then that's how we did the chroma key. And it was a really good chroma key, to tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember those cameras and the, the light rings. I thought the only people that used those were dentists. 
yeah, you know, who did yeah, yeah. You know, pictures. But, but the they trouble were, with them was uh, that, ring for macro uh, photography. Yeah, right. But, and that but, too, but, but right, the problem, yeah. the problem with the ring was that if you're doing two hours of a show and there's a blue ring in front of you, after about two hours, your eyes kind of go boom, you know. Hello, Ray. Oh. Hey. It's Ray. You like that? Loom XL X10. Are you, are you talking show? about the show that you did? They did a few years ago. Like Albert was helping you. And, and no, well, that that, that was so the other thing. Yeah, that was later on. That was oh, okay. uh, when when I left uh, Sirius. We went over and we did a thing out of a TV studio every day for about yeah. seven months or something like that. It looked great too. It yeah, had, that looked really it, good. It looked, you know, I yeah. I, I had a, a a blue screen in back of me, and the whole set was phony, including the desk I was sitting at. Uh, but it looked good. You know, it looked really good. <laughs> yeah, and you know, everybody uses green now for King. They, well, don't use, well, they, they, they use blue in the studio because my friend Steve liked blue. But green is really the yeah. one they use. And the reason they use yeah, green, yeah. although uh, things are better today. But what would happen is if you had, uh, in case people don't know what we're talking about, uh, what happens is if you're going to put uh, some That's some background on you, you just simply put a blue screen. This is how they do this like in movies. Yeah. They, they use blue in the movies a lot. They use green too, uh, and and then anything they want to mat in back of you or whatever is just matted onto anything that happens to be blue. All right, you get that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Yep. So uh, the reason why they went to green, they used to use blue all the time, and then they went to green is because people would come in wearing blue jeans. It was more <laughs> common for you to wear. Right. If if you look at everybody here, well, then, me, look at me. I'm wearing blue. Okay. Yeah. But I probably would not be wearing the same shirt in green, or in a bright green. All right. So green became the commonplace for using, but then. Chroma key technology got so good that you could I could be wearing jeans and it wouldn't uh, it it wouldn't work on the chroma key. Uh, that OBS that you've got does yeah. chroma key? Yes, if I wanted to, yeah. So all all you need's a piece of cloth behind you? Yeah. And some light? <laughs> yeah, but why would I want to? Why not? Why? Well, what am I going to put in back of me? Your two the, seals put kissing? The what am I going to put in back of me? The two seals kissing? What? You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't. You don't. You don't get bored with the same set. I. <laughs> I you know, this is a, this whole well, show is just functional. It's really supposed to be a, a an audio show, and somehow yeah. it is so migrated now that people don't even listen to the audio anymore. <laughs> you know. Uh, you know. I, I, I listen on TuneIn when I'm when I'm not on here. Right. Right. Yeah. So, but but uh, in fact, uh, uh, most nights lately, the 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 audio audience is smaller than the TV audience. But let me see here. What's you here? got thirty five. Well, I don't know how what that means exactly because at the end of the night, I've I've had a total of more. Yeah, there are there are about a third of the people are are listening to the audio tonight. It's usually well, I, I a few minutes ago I went on to Facebook uh, on my Facebook page and i posted a link to the show and i said hey any any of my friends want to see me on the show yeah just check it out it's a yeah good well show, we're, so. we're doing okay with, with, the, with the with the video tonight and you know the mm -hmm. audio it, it's strange because when they go to get the audio they many of them go to gabnet yeah. gabnet.net and and but, but we have the audio you can play it there but you can also watch the video live yeah so yeah. uh yeah. what would you rather do if you came to the page, listen to the audio or watch the video. So no, you want to see who's who's saying all this stupid shit. Well, <laughs> or, or as we know it, assault your senses. Uh, yeah. Uh, you've been quiet tonight, Jeff. What's up with you? Uh, you're muted, Jeff. Jeff, you're muted. I can't hear myself either. I don't know what I did. Well, you're, you're fine. I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyway, I keep it muted when uh, when I'm not talking. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, I got my new Cialis today. Oh, <laughs> what? Wow! That's I fun. had the same Ooh. problem that you had. Yeah, surprised your cabinet. So <laughs> what? Twenty milligram or five? Oh. So what happened? Your doctor had to had to five. write a letter saying you needed it. Yeah. Oh, no go problem. on the Cialis website. There's a two hundred dollar uh, discount certificate. Good. That That'll. Uh, then I'll only have to pay eight hundred dollars. 
Well, well, at least you know if you're getting the rate a, a reasonable rate, you just use you know put that two hundred dollar certificate, just print it out, it's free. Yeah, but I'm, I haven't got that yet. How long did it take you to get your your exception or whatever that's called? Uh, I just no, I, I, I'm talking to Jeff. Overnight. What? Overnight they did it. And what? Your yeah. doctor just wrote him and said he needs it, and this is why he needs it. Yeah. Oh, they, right. they have a standard. Yeah. Uh, isn't uh, answer that, uh, yeah. isn't isn't Cialis and those like if you have heart issues it's very dangerous? Uh, yeah, I could be. I don't think so. It could no, it be. It says on here it used to treat it used to be treat uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension. Yeah, but it also found that it it took care of uh, of BPH benign prostate hyperplasia. Oh uh, yeah, I see that. Yeah, and, and, and for, it gives you a heart on right on. Well, the yeah, you get the whole bundle. Yeah, but I, I be, but they won't. These companies, I'm sure, they <laughs> didn't say it's because Jeff can't get a heart on. They said it was because you had a large prostate, right? Because yeah. mo these insurance companies don't want to give it for you to get a heart on. I don't know who it is that's trying to keep the price up. Is it Pfizer who's doing it? Because yeah, they, the price is about yeah, maybe that punk Shirelli who's in jail now did it. You know, no, it's three hundred and twenty-five dollars for the daily Cialis. I mean, it's consistent. They're keeping it up, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, now, on the other you hand, can you can buy if, if others you, if, that are somewhat similar. Well, no, in Canada no. and India and things like that. Well, uh, not like Cialis. Cialis takes care of benign prostate hyperplasia and erectile dysfunction. Uh, uh, Viagra only took care of erectile dysfunction, and it's gone. It, it's gone into uh, what do they call it? Uh, receivership? Uh, no, no. <laughs> Where it's none of these pharmaceutical companies are going into receivership. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, no, it's it's uh, it's become uh, gen generic. And there's, so there's a generic brand right. of Viagra, but there isn't yet of Cialis. Uh, it didn't work for me that uh, it didn't work for me for the BPH. Really? Well, yeah, it, yeah I pee it. like a racehorse with it. Yeah, yeah. I wish. I mean, know. I can take Flomax and it might do the same thing, but it does. <laughs> I like the hard on part of it. That's kind of nice. You know, uh, are we talking about guy stuff? You women can call and talk <laughs> about your vagina stuff if you want to. Uh, Candace is on here. Uh, I don't know who Rocco is. Right. Rocco could be anything. And then Forbin Colossus. I don't know. Who that is. Uh, uh, Forbin's an uh, old computer system. Well, Rocco it? says, thank goodness we can see what? who's saying all this stupid shit. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah. Yeah. And of course, uh, Phil, uh, uh, last night, Phil, uh, uh, you embarrassed us all. <laughs> you yeah. really did. How did you do that? I didn't hear last night's oh, program. Oh, 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 you missed. Oh, uh, you, you missed a winner, Phil. Your microphone isn't on. What I asked <laughs> was not. Was, <laughs> I, I, he, you, you gave me a look like, oh fuck you, you won't pay attention to me. No, we couldn't <laughs> hear you. Oh well, thanks. Anyway, what I what I asked was not a racist thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know when <laughs> yes, I, yes it was no it wasn't yes you, it you, was too sensitive tell, tell him tell him what you said because Rob didn't hear it last night the rest of I, us heard it I last asked night. I asked uh, uh, this guy uh, uh, you know, uh, who Mario he, who he, happens he, to be of he, the uh, black, black persuasion. persuasion yeah so anyway I asked him uh, if if he wore his pants you know how he how he wore his pants. <laughs> uh, because he, he said he said he was getting targeted and he was, he was getting what targeted targeted you know basically you know uh he said he keeps his hair natural but you don't uh, think there's a chance that he isn't course. getting targeted because his skin happens to be black yes and so oh, I, I see said, okay. look do you think that if if D you don't go with like this I again see, phil you, phil you're oh, digging it deeper you no. also kept telling him he was pulling the black card yeah, he was. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I, excuse me, I'm pulling the white card. Hey, did you hear about the shooting today uh, in Michigan? Uh, a black uh, a student was shot at his parents, but. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, well, so. It was a family squabble. Well, okay. It okay, so it has nothing to do with what, what's been going on. Anyway, the point was that last night you exhibited a, a, a 
a, <clears throat> um, a, a level of racism that I have not heard out of a white Jewish male in years. <laughs> if a guy walks around dressed like a thug, I figure he either is or wants to be a thug. And that's the way thugs dress. They dress that way in prison, and they dress that way on the street trying to look like a prison thug. So just and because somebody wears his pants a little lower than they should be. A little lower? Come on. It, Some of them, they got their... No, it's the way those pants are built. You can't get no, them up uh, higher because that, that's well, where the may, crotch may, is. Maybe the Phil, guy, you, uh, maybe you the rap artists have pants built uh, like Anyway, that. ladies Phil, and gentlemen, you know if, you didn't hear, if, if you didn't hear... If you didn't hear a three-piece suit. It, and then you wouldn't know he's a thug. Yeah. And then he, like, okay. thugs yeah. you. Yeah. Then, then, no then he would act like a, a, a normal well, All I'm saying uh, to, to, to Rob, who didn't hear it last night, is that if you have a chance, go back and listen to the last but, half hour of so last Ray, night's show. It's, Ray uh, asked me uh, something. Tomorrow, it's what I'll listen to. Yeah, yeah. Ray asked me something that was very telling last night. He says, would you feel the same way about the kid, uh, you know, with the pants and so forth, if they were white. And I said, yeah, of course I would. And it had nothing to do with black or white. It had to do with thugism. And uh, <laughs> it's a style. It's hip hop style. I give them a hip hop yeah, style. Yeah, just, just because it isn't your style. I mean, when I was a kid, you remember when we were kids, we all had our style of the day because that's what we it differentiated us from yeah. our parents, you know. Nehru ne jackets and elephant jeans. Yeah. Bell yeah, that, Bell 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 yeah. And you know what? Uh, anybody who wore the, that clothing, uh, I automatically pegged as a moron. Well, they, you know. they were. Uh, and by the way, I had two Nehru jackets and okay. one in bright green that I you could have used the, as a chroma screen today. Right. You know, the worst thing is, I bought that stuff uh, when I went to London on Carnaby Street. And uh, it was maybe a year or so bef uh, before they got it in New York. <laughs> and uh, it was, uh, I, I really looked out of place. I remember when I got my first leisure suit. It was a green. Oh, I never had a. I never had a leisure, leisure suit. suit. Never I was had a years leisure. old. I thought I was. I, I had was a badass did, leisure suit. Did you have a leisure suit? The, the little studs on it. Oh, oh yeah. I, and was, I had the black. Was it aquamarine in color by any chance? Yeah, powder blue. Yeah. <laughs> powder <laughs> blue. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. wore a powder blue around. suit to the to the prom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Powder powder blue uh, you know, tuxedo. Tuxedo. With a rough I, shirt. When I got married, yeah. they gave us the wrong tuxedos, and my ex-wife, she never saw what I picked up. And they were powder blue tuxedos. I must have got the ones for a Mexican wedding. <laughs> <laughs> now, there you go again. More racism. He is one racist for the world. Baby blue. <laughs> What's that? Scumby? Scumby. Yeah. <laughs> that one I don't know. That's that my Scumby shirt. It's a rare collector's item I got in San Francisco when after the Gumby cartoon thing oh. was canceled, then they created the shirt Scumby. It's a collector's item. Really? Yeah. yeah okay. Check it out. He was once a little green ball of clay. Oh, wow. Scumby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I always hated oh, that yeah. show. I always hated that show. Uh, I loved it. No, and, and, and I found out why yeah. I should hate it because it was done by for it was actually been uh, created to instill Christian values in kids. It was done by a real Ooh. Jesus freak. Well, yeah, but he was Pope. So that's why we got this guy Cloaky was his name. Uh, Can I ask yes. a question? What? Uh, I you know he's an actor. What is? Can you do the your favorite line from any uh, a thing that you were in? You know, I mean, you know, like one right line, now. Yeah, yeah, just do it. <laughs> uh, give me a second. Or, uh, or get some kind of famous baseball, you know, so we can banter about that. <laughs> I, re I remember one of my parts when I was in grade school uh, yeah. at Garfield School. They did the Christmas pageant, and since I was the only Jew in the neighborhood, yeah. they gave me the part of the innkeeper oh, that turned Mary and Joseph away. I figured, I figured the and led them to the manger, and, and I remember, I remember what I did. I didn't even have anything to say. I just went, get out of here, and I pointed. <laughs> that was it. No soup for you. The next, the only other play I remember, we did a, a, a arsenic and old lace at the uh, at the Ross Valley Players Junior play. Theater. That's a great play. It, it is a great Love. play, and I played the Boris yeah. Karloff character. Yeah. 
Ross Valley. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, the one I have that, a friend who directs there all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, theater it, though, the ceiling's too low. It's like. Is it's it like, still? It's still the bar, kind of a barn. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they haven't changed it at all, ever. Wow. Marin a, Garden? Is that what you're talking it, it about? Might, yeah, yeah. Marin Art Garden oh, Center. Oh, shit. It's the Ross oh. Valley Players. Yeah, that's right near you. There. Yeah, it is. And yeah. the, the, adult, the adult group used to do some very good plays. I mean, they... They still do. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. But really they, good stuff. But we did... Uh, oh, let's see here. Doctor, welcome to the home of my youth. I, that's all I can remember from the whole thing. In fact, I remember doing something. This is something that you do... I, I, Ray can relate to this. Oh, we're, we're doing arsenic and old lace. And somehow, somewhere, I don't know where it was, I said a line that unfortunately was a line from earlier in the act, like <laughs> from the beginning of the act. And so when I said that line, everybody reacted to that line, and we started the whole, sh the whole play <laughs> from the top. Uh, we were in this, this is when you were a kid? Yeah, and we got yeah. into this endless cycle, and finally I just had to go curtain, and we got off. That was the longest act one in the history of arsenic and old lace. I, I did that when I was in seventh or eighth grade myself. Yeah. I had, like, the lead the lead role. <laughs> I, I started in the wrong spot, and then we ended up having to go backwards and doing over. Well, the, and the, the parents, yeah. all I can remember is the parents laughing, like, you know, Hunched over with pain and laughter. Well, my, like, my biggest at me yeah. or with me. I my biggest, know. my biggest fault in acting, and the reason I didn't become a, a, a go into acting as heavily as I should have, was that uh, I, I just had a hard time memorizing scripts. Uh, you know, I mean, that's me tough. Memorization is. I mean, you got to realize yeah. that you really, if you if you're like the lead character, you're you're memorizing almost the whole play because you're not only memorizing your lines, you also have to know what everybody else's lines are so you pick up on that line. And um, it wasn't until I got to television that I learned how to memorize, but it was only because we did them in short bits, mm -hmm. you know, and also. I realized that you didn't have to memorize. You had to see what it was, what it said, and just remember to kind of say what it said. In other words, the reason I couldn't memorize was I was afraid I couldn't memorize. You mm. know, so. The only thing I had to memorize was my Torah portion. Otherwise, I had never gotten through my bar mitzvah. Oh, I had somebody whispering it in my ear. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. You had IFB in? You're your what? <laughs> Did you have your IFB in when they were talking? Yeah, right. To the I, I, IFBs are, are uh, earphones. He didn't that have you electricity wearing. when he was bar mitzvah. <laughs> 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 oh, very funny, very funny. But 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 we did have one thing that worked. That the uh, the uh, the lights worked for eight days. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you know we had enough oil for eight days. Yeah. Well, you were you rode with the Maccabees, that's a, didn't you? That's a very Jewish joke, folks. I don't expect any of you to understand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jew jokes. Uh, but I, I thought you got you disappeared for a while there to get your baseball. No, it's the slow prostate thing. That's what it took. So uh, the slow yeah. prostate. Oh, because you don't take the Cialis. I see. I can't. Doesn't work. I tried it. Yeah. Well, you try it for a few weeks before I you. Can, for yeah. a month, I did uh, actually two months. I had two months worth. I, it I took I took Flomax and I found it kind of made me drowsy and stuff like that. But I found Cialis was great. Doesn't doesn't affect me at all. You know, yeah, Flomax right. works for me, but yeah. I don't like the. Uh, uh, you know, just really, not, I want I'm people. Needed. I want people to pay attention to this moment, folks. Uh, in case you're in case you're listening to us, or in case you're watching <laughs> Jesus us. Christ. Uh, <laughs> these are really a bunch of old men talking about old men stuff. Hey, my prostate. The, the, it flows better with flow beads. Uh, you know. Flomax, uh, Cialis over Flomax over whatever. Yeah. What, guys? Okay. You won't get I have never taken any. Well, well you're, you're young enough, and you're in great shape. I, you know, I saw a picture you know, of he Ray looks a little when like he was running a marathon. Yeah. That, that guy should be ashamed he's in such good shape. But that was 30 years ago. <laughs> do, you, do, you know, do you know, wait a minute. And I, I, one night, a couple of nights ago, I said that you, Phil, yeah. look like Louis Black. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Am I not? Am I right, Rob? Yeah. Now yes. look at yeah, Ray. Isn't there? Can you see a little? West. Just look straight ahead, Ray. He does look like what? No. Yeah. Doesn't he look a little like Dustin Hoffman? Yeah. A yeah. A little. I do. Yeah. 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 I've been touching. Yeah. I've never heard that. 
Yeah. You can't, uh, you, you, uh, or an older Tom Cruise. I have to go watch Jeff. An older Tom Cruise. My brother does look like Tom Cruise. See? Like, really looks like Tom yeah. Cruise. Yeah. And we were when we were younger, we'd go out and all all the girls would be giving him all the attention, and I'd be like a sidekick with not, with getting the dirty. Cast well, off. then you should have said uh, definitely, definitely, uh, definitely, uh, yeah. a jeopardy. Right. definitely jeopardy, 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 j
you know, politics like, you know, like they were against the civil rights movement. And it was the tit for tat thing again by the, the Republicans. Well, they want their tat back is the problem. Hello, Renee. Yeah. How are you, my dear? I thought I would chime in to break up this sausage fest. Well, thank you, you very much. Sausage fest. <laughs> You're gonna grind uh, it up, are you? Because because we do have prostate problems here on this program amongst the panel. No, 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 no honey. You have prostate problems. It's not in my ballpark. No, I'm getting no. rid of my prostate and, and cancer in one foul swoop. It, 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 See, she said ballpark. That means she's paying attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, well, wait a minute. There's got to be some female problem that that women have that's the equivalent of a prostate, something in that area. Yeast infections, uh, whatever. Yeah, you're talking about something that's going to go south that has to be removed. You guys used to rip all of our internal uh, reproductive oh, system oh, out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now you're a little more selective because we know more stuff. So they don't just rip it out. Oh, unless you live in Florida. Yeah, there you yeah. go. What then, about when it all starts falling out, though? Like, what's that called? Being down or out? Like, just <laughs> falling down and then, like, coming out of, of yes, the that's area. <laughs> I, I don't Things think they... Just fall out of yeah, 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 yeah. There's a thing where, like, it, it like starts falling down. It's called down, fallout like, syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> and acid. <laughs> yeah, there is, there is something of, uh, that some women have that, that they're, they've tilted in the wrong direction and that becomes a big deal. But I... You know, I'm pretty sure they can. It's a surgery issue. Okay. I think the thing that we're, we're holding is, up our medicines. <laughs> Mike and Davis. That's for that pull out. That's for my. Uh, that's for my torn meniscus. But but normally women don't have things other than yeah, what they don't fall out. What is it? It's it, this is for my uh, torn meniscus. It's called Voltaire ah, gel. Had surgery for my torn I'm, I'm getting mine done next Thursday. Do you know I had to get a special a dispensation to get this stuff cheap? I mean, it's it's really uh, the drug companies. They have they have a thing they call what do they call it now? It's uh profit. No, no, the, it, the it, formularies. That's what it's called. And every year the formularies change like certain drugs they won't cover unless you go through all kinds of things to get it and yeah, so on. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. So, Kevin, you're getting your your ACL ripped out, or what are you doing? No, no, they're gonna cut me up and do a scope on me next Thursday. What 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 are they doing? Mm. I got a tear in my meniscus, and they're gonna scope out the. Well, I've I, I've got a torn meniscus in my knee. Yeah, they go in and they scrape it out. I had that. They out. can get rid of the arthritis. No, they can yeah. just take out the the cartilage. The that's screwed oh. up. Yeah, well, the thing is, that I, I uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to go to you <laughs> right in, next, Renee. I, uh, you know, I got this torn meniscus, and it's just, you know, like a sports injury, and I, I don't do sports. I don't know how I got it. I don't either. I it, can't. It, it's yeah. the only yeah. surgery that I've ever seen. It's come a long way since what I had seen. And by the way, you can ask them for a copy of it because there's no blood in a meniscus in your knee. So it's not a bloody gory thing. And unfortunately, last time I saw it was in black and white. But it's a really cool, it, it's very cool to actually watch it take place. I had one done in my ankle and it was the nastiest thing I ever saw. <laughs> Well, because it was you, or it was just. Bad I've been money. I've been told that I, I, I if I oh, can if I can manage it, and it has been hurting lately. But you know that it may just get a little bit better, a little bit better. It'll never become untorn, but it will. No. But but yeah. it's never been to the point that where it, in the beginning it was bad, but it got better with exercise and so on and so forth. But the thing is that um, uh, I've been told that I could have it operated on, but there's no guarantee the operation will actually work. That's well, right. My daughter had a meniscus re replacement. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I have a torn But what what if, if, I'm listening. We're listening. We're listening, Kevin. Then we'll get to you. Uh, uh, to yeah. Oh, and my daughter yes, Kevin. Had a what were you saying? Huh? Transplant. My daughter had a, a transplant. transplant. A meniscus yeah. transplant. Uh, and then wait a minute. Jeff's been having his hand up for a long time. Sure. And then we'll go to Phil. Yes, Jeff. Uh, yeah, they used to call that procedure the something or other, John. Who is a Tommy, baseball uh, player? Tommy, Tommy John. John yeah. yeah. No, Tommy John surgery is is this is is the in elbow, this yeah. mechanism. Well, that's where it started, but it, it's the same uh, surgical procedure underwear. that. She's Here we are. Now we've completely oh, lost me because it's not only a sports reference, but it's a medical reference as well, and I, I, I it doesn't make sense to me at all now. Bill, 
you and it brings in the topic of baseball again. Yeah, yeah. it's like Lou Gehrig's <laughs> disease. Yeah, see, there we go. But anyway, I, I worked on that first uh, product that was used, and uh, it was pretty successful. Yeah, it was, I it think was uh, Boston Scientific owns it now. Yeah, uh, see, I, Boston. I on that. I, I have know, a uh, 35 years ago. I have a torn meniscus too. But I find that when I lose weight, uh, which, you know, I, I go back and forth, uh, then it doesn't bother me at all. Well, uh, it, it, uh, uh, I actually got the torn meniscus after I lost all this weight. Really? I remember I was on the, fl I was on the, the, fl I was on the floor together. of the kitchen trying to find something under the sink or whatever, and I twisted my knee slightly, and all of a sudden I went, oh, my God, that's the most painful thing that's ever happened. And I've had yeah. to go to a, a doctor about it. He said, tore meniscus. He said, it's not terrible, but, you know, it's going to take a while to not heal. It will never heal, but it will get better. So, oh, I, Kevin, I would like, yeah, Kevin, I'd like to know what they used, uh, the replacement was, the swap out with what? Boy, this Cadaver. has got to be going over great with the audience. Go ahead. Cadaver. <laughs> it's a medical Cadaver, channel. Yeah. Well, but the thing is, is this is something a lot of people get. I mean, I probably couldn't throw a rock and, and not hit somebody that didn't have this kind of an issue. So it's nice to know that they're uh, progressing. So because before they would just rip it out and it would be bone on bone. And it was really, and you can walk, you can see those people walk around. And so all the all the young listeners, if we have any, <laughs> why? But you got to look forward. To. Uh, uh, look what you've got to look forward to. <laughs> my exactly. issue is, I, I've been putting up for about a year, but I've got because of my left ankle, mm -hmm. and right now my heel is separated from my ankle, oh, my geez. foot. Well, and, and because of the, my fusion and my you, ankle, you probably in many I've ways look like a right you probably look like a broken marionette. Oh, I'm all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I look like a weeble. That well, don't so walk. Rob, are you in good shape? Any problems? Uh... No, the prostate and uh, my prostate too. Yeah. What? I get this, I get, you see, my knee here on my knee. Yeah. There's an oval that starts at the top of my knee and works probably halfway. Uh, it's all numb there, always. That's the ringworm. Oh, really? I have numb feet, but also, <laughs> you see my knee? I have a banjo on my knee. <laughs> I come from, right, I come from, I've come, I, by the way, I come from Alabama. I have to tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Suzanne. Where's my hat? Where's my hat? Oh man! Thank God we haven't mentioned Bring school killings all night. You know, it's. Uh... Hey, uh, you want a reason for the Second Amendment? Oh, oh, oh God! <laughs> Boom! Left turn. As soon as I mention that we've gotten through the whole night without getting into the Second Amendment, <laughs> Mister Mister Drive it into a ditch makes a comment. <laughs> Renee, yes, Renee. Uh, According to the San Francisco Giants, they have a spring training training game this weekend, so I get to watch baseball. Oh, really? I watched Yankees today. <gasps> you did? Yeah. Damn. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you might have watched that. Oh, yeah, you're a big Yankees fan, aren't you? Okay. Huge. Yeah. I mean, do you watch every game? Like Huge. my like my friend Shecky listens or watches every game. Oh, honey, he's on a separate server in a different country. If I am home, I will watch it. If I'm out, then I'm out. And if I'm in the car and it's on, I'll listen to it on the radio. But I don't, you know, there's 162 games. So yeah. it's not like a football game where, you you know, you, you it's appointment television. But if I'm home, it's on. If I'm in the car, it's on. If I'm someplace, I'll check the score. Somebody writes here, go Giants. Uh, it, 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 the thing is, it is it's a, it's a process. Baseball, 167 games. It's a process. 62 and, games. 62 games. Uh, 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 that's much but I know it's about so baseball. Predictable, you know. I mean, uh, the way they they predictable. Way they Phil, 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 Phil. They go to they go from home plate to first base to second base, it, 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 sometimes the ball goes to. Do outfield. you know that it is the most mathematically perfect game ever created? That if th those uh, bases were were like one inch mo more or less, it would not be perfect. 
There, there's yeah. a certain perfection to the geometry of baseball that makes it a great game. And the only reason why it didn't do well once television came in is it's not an action-filled yeah. game. They had to no. kind of speed baseball up a little bit to make it television-worthy. That's why football was never a big sport because all you could do was was describe a very complicated action of running back and forth. Once television came in, football became very big. Prior to that, football was not the national sport. You know? No. But baseball is a geometrically perfect game. And I'm ro I'm romancing about a sport I don't even follow. Okay? I don't know. You know, I, I photographed uh, a bunch of pro games and uh, a, a, A's uh, uh, games. Yeah. And it just seemed like I mean I had I, you know I had a 500 millimeter lens as well as you know a 20 a 70 to 200 and the, uh, and you know there there was just so much you could get it was like uh, the guy hit the ball uh, if there was a runner on first you had to make sure that you saw no, what was going to happen that, to go to second yeah no, that's not what's great about baseball let, though let me uh, let me frame it for you a little differently because I worked in sports television I did baseball games I did hockey games. I did yeah. basketball games. It's the one sport where you can, if, there's no high, like, you know, in a hockey game, you have a high camera that follows the mm -hmm. action mm -hmm. back and forth, up and down the ice. Same thing with basketball, right? Mm -hmm. Right. They got one up on the thing. I know where you're going with this. I know where you're going with, with it. Ball, you really, uh, to, to, to direct a baseball game, you're looking all over the place because is the guy going to hit the ball? Is it going to be a strike? Is it going to be a ball? Is it going to get away from him? Is he right. going to hit the left? Is he going to hit right. right? Here's uh, let me tell you some. Let me second base. Yeah. Let think me let, let me tell you something else here, uh, and I think this is where you were. Uh, you're, what you're actually saying. I had a friend, a lady friend, who uh, her job was she would go out and set up uh, the, uh, the various games for sports. In other words, how many cameras do we need for it? Where are we going to put the cameras? Blah, 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 blah. That was her entire job. I said, what is the least difficult sport to set up? And she said, football. Basketball. She said, football. She said, I think it's basketball. Foot, foot, mm -hmm. football, uh, you know, basically yeah. you had a camera going two different ways, and that's about it. You need to look at the whole field. She says, right. the one that you need the most cameras for is baseball. Because you, know, you don't know where that very, ball is going to go. Yeah, you see, with, with basketball, uh, when I shot uh, Warrior games, uh, I sat uh, under the net. Uh, you know, they have a they have uh, 12, 12 spaces, and they uh, put your name on the uh, on the wood uh, on a card, and you sat there and you didn't move. Uh, and so you you were under, and you you had a. I have two cameras, so I could take shots going down the other way. And just take yeah, shots. But, but what I'm saying is that it, it, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you're going to actually do a TV coverage of, of a game, okay. baseball takes more cameras than football. It takes more cameras and it takes a director who's really following the action. And because, again, you know, if you you could miss very easily miss a guy stealing a base, a guy getting picked off first. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. So you know, there's any different places on the looking, field. You're, look, you're looking. You're looking there and you're assuming yeah. there, but they do it so many times that eventually you get it. I mean, now, well, football, course, football, they use more cameras course. now than they used to because they they just kind of illustrate it more. They kind of try to get away from the boring two shot of, of a football game. Uh, the, you know, I'd love to see the side control side. room. I'd love to see the control room, uh, you know, at uh, one of these baseball shoots. Because uh, I, I would even imagine they have several directors calling out nope. shots. One director. No, one, just, one, 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 yeah, one director, but you yeah, have people, you have, you have people running your replay and so on and doing the quick editing yeah. on that. Oh, you absolutely, know. yes. But there's uh, one guy who makes the calls, and he's, uh, you know, let's just say hi, home is camera two. The shot from center field in is camera one, and it's like uh, ready two, ready two, ready three, ready three, ready one, take two. And it's just you're, you're talking that's, video. that's crazy. You're talking video. I shoot stills, so I'm in one, you know, basically one position. 
uh, you know, the... Uh, yeah, but we're not talking pitch. about taking photographs. We're talking about actual coverage of a game using television. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, well, I, I remember I worked uh, the uh, control room at CBS during the Republican convention, and I actually learned how you direct TV shows by watching Don Hewitt. Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. And oh, I, I was yeah. so enamored of what he was able to do by saying, ready to take two, ready one, take one. And he'd snap his finger every time he wanted the take, right? Cool. And, and the How fact you, that he could concentrate on that and do it with such precision, and of course, you know, the TD, the technical director, is, is doing all the actual switching, and he's following everything that you had saying. And it was just amazing, just amazing. Yeah, it is, it is. You know hey, what guys, I gotta put in a plug. Yeah. Uh, on March 24th, I'll be directing uh, my little film crew shooting uh, Dragon House MMA. So go to dragonhousemma.com and you could sign up for the pay-per-view and I'll be directing the uh, uh, shoot. Is that MMA Fighters? Yeah. Yeah, MMA. No, uh, it's MMA Chefs. Yeah, what? I, I can show you some shots that I got. Can oh, I, no, uh, let's not I talk shoot? about your photography I... again. Uh, hey, uh, I'll get you in ringside seat. I, I'm right next to the okay. cage. I, I, yeah. I want to get on the on the uh, apron. I, I could do. I could probably do that for Photo you. Pass. Yeah, we should talk. Yeah, when, okay. are you, when are you doing yeah. that uh, again? <clears throat> March 24th at Dragon and House. And when's your when's your prostate being com. removed, Phil? Yeah, I'll be in the hospital. Okay, he'll come down and drag his prostate <laughs> behind him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe another time. <laughs> yeah, he's... I'll have a colostomy bag. <laughs> oh, great! Oh, jeez, yeah, yeah. And a catheter. Yeah. See, uh, now these are all props that we're going to use on the next show, right? You yeah. know, colostomy bags. That's, that's... Especially if it's signed by an MLB umpire. <laughs> well, listen, we we've got about a thir uh, fourteen minutes left, and Phil did bring up the Second Amendment. Okay. Ah. Why so, we want can I can I say God. why it's a good thing? Oh God! Uh, okay, I'm reading here the DailyMail.com. Oh, oh yeah, very reliable, very reliable. Uh, wait, hold on a second, isn't that Murdoch's bullshit? No, oh, look it up. Uh, Daily Mail, I don't okay. think is Murdoch's, but it's 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 a rumor rag. Okay, yeah. at this point, the red line is we are not calling for the slaughter. We are not calling for the slaughter of white people. At least for now, South African Parliament votes to seize white-owned land as experts warn of violent repercussions. So it looks like the parliament in South Africa has voted to, uh, uh, to seize uh, white landowners' land. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's the kind aren't, of... Aren't, aren't, we, aren't we dealing in whataboutism again? No. These people are losing their land and they may get killed. And and they have no you know. Well, wait a minute, that's South Africa. That's not the U.S. You don't. I understand. That's why South Africa doesn't have a Second Amendment. We do. <laughs> they know? don't have a Second Amendment because they're, they, they, to begin with, there 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 isn't just one Africa. South Africa. South Africa. There is a South Africa. Yes. Well, you know, we did use the Second Amendment to steal much of the land of the original inhabitants of the USA, uh, the Native no, Americans. And see, we that's what I was going to say. Amendment. Well, there was no amendment. Until after we stole the land. Wait a second. Did you say that there are white people in South Africa getting chased off of their land? Yeah, there's, there's a good, very good point. <laughs> white <Right. Yeah>. <laughs> land? <laughs> their land? Hey, it would be like chasing. Hey, they, they all the Hawaiians say, okay, we're going to get rid of that uh, that lady with the hair. Uh, and she's she's on our land. The lady with the hair. What? What? Cause the lady on our screen with the hair right now. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh! I see. They're called. They have a name for us. They're called. Ha we call Howleys. We are called Howleys. Howleys. You're Howleys. Howleys. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. I know Howleys. Howleys. Yeah. Yeah. And just so you know, it's not a nice name, but it's still what, what they call it. Now, you don't get. It's like a gringo. Like a yeah. 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 Sometimes, sometimes there's a word that goes in front of. It. I think it's, it's it's fucking, <laughs> fucking That's Howleys. Fucking yeah. Now you don't get Kamahena. 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 It's Kamahena. Yeah. Yeah. You're not allowed to have Kamahena discount. Yeah, I, I can I can also name the world's uh, smallest fish with the world's longest name. The Huma uh, <laughs> Nuka Nuka Apu Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Say it again. It's the Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Apu Apa. 
That's How many Steve times did you rehearse that? I've, yeah. I've been known it for years. That's I went to Steve Hawaii, Fish. and that was yeah. all. I and, and I came. I didn't come back with a stupid T-shirt. I came back with the ability to say "Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Apo Apo Ah." Well, that's part Wait of a, a song. That Where is the Huma Huma hey, Nuka Nuka Apo Apo Ah Ah goes swimming shirt. by. What? I, I got did a see it. Oh, see, I was making dinner, and I was. I saw Phil. Your photos were really good, and the scumby shirt I have never seen before. But once I saw that joint, is that a bottle or a joint rolled in his hand? Both. Both. It's a boat. It's a boat. Okay. Uh, wish me luck. I, I have taken first place in every competition since I joined that club in January. Boy, there must be what, some. the photography thing again? Yeah. yeah. Well, all the, these well he's good. Phil, Phil's good. I, yeah, I, I, I know. just saw two little things, and, uh, yeah, you know, nice. that yeah, says a lot. The, oh, by the way, you should plug uh, 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 your friend's show, Bubble Show, again. I'm not going to be able to make it because I'm shooting a concert on Saturday. Uh, I've got a ha uh, with the handful lie. of audience that I have. I'm supposed to uh, tell them that Bubbles is doing a show at the Throckmorton in Mill Valley tomorrow night. That's it's right. His, it's his 37th right. anniversary in comedy. That's right. Yes, yes, Renee. I would like um, a Bubbles uh, ringtone. I want my ringtone to say "hookers," <laughs> <laughs> and and if you can help Larry do that, then we can go online and actually buy it from him. So uh, bubbles ringtones, yeah, hooker. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, uh, Ray, you're shooting yeah. concert Saturday. I am shooting one on Saturday. Yeah, uh, oh, I'm getting I'm, paid like four hundred bucks. Really, I'm shoot uh, shooting Star Set. So oh, is, oh! I'm doing a cabaret show in the city at Society Cabaret. You know what huh. I'm doing Saturday? Not a goddamn fucking thing. Uh, <laughs> in New York, just walk outside your door. Yeah. Yeah, what's out there? It's fucking New York. Oh. <laughs> no, you know, I'm, I'm, I, listen, hey. I'm, I'm, I was raised as a free-range chicken, okay? I was raised <laughs> in Marin County, that, California. I was raised in San Francisco, where you got into your car, you drove for 20 minutes, you were on the top of a mountain, you know, away from everything. Uh, and here, you just can't get away from New York. I mean, I don't know where the exit is anymore. You know, tomorrow, uh, Sunday, we're going to get in the car and we're going to go all the way up about 20 miles to Stu Leonard's, which is a, a place to buy food. You know Stu Leonard's, right, Jeff? Jeff knows what I'm talking about. Oh, Stu, yeah, there's about three of them. Just yeah. go to it's, Grand Central uh, no, Station. No, explain. Is, Stu Leonard's is different as a supermarket has ever been. You actually go down a path in the store uh, that you can you can't, you really have to follow the path. And as you go along, you just find stuff to buy. And if you didn't you buy it down further, they still have it up further just in case you forgot. I, I got a fun thing for you. You go to you go to Grand Central Station. Yeah. You walk onto the platform. You get on the first train. You don't know where it's going to go. You go. When you get there, you you uh, get to some interesting spot. If I get on a train going north from Grand Central Station, you know where the first stop is? Uh, Harlem Yonkers, uh, 125th Street in Harlem. So I could just yeah. take it to come home. Uh, uh, yeah, but no, the train doesn't stop in yes, Harlem. Yes, it does. Sure, it does. Oh Sorry. yeah. Uh, the, I hear, uh, I believe it or not, when I first moved to Harlem, I went, am I hearing trains? And there was like the whistle of a train. And yes, the train is going down about where Lexington is, right, uh, Jeff? And and yeah. at 125th in Lexington, you got a, a train station there. Yeah, we used to take the train from Peekskill. I grew up near Peekskill, so yeah. uh, it was in Upper Westchester. And... Uh, uh, it, it's a pretty area, you know. You got Bear Mountain. You just get yeah. off. You rent a car yeah. Yeah. And, okay. and drive around. Hey, I used to hang out in Monroe, so I'm yeah. familiar with Peekskill. Okay, so if in the last yeah. couple of minutes, we have allotted to us here um, before I uh, uh, turn the programming over to the intersection. Uh, we have the Oscars this weekend. Anybody see any of the movies? Mm. Yes. yes. What other movies? Okay. I, I like Greatest Hour. I think it's going to win Best Picture and possibly Best Actor. I don't think it'll win Best Picture. It'll, he'll win for Best Actor, although I did not like his performance particularly. Um, yeah, we went over that before, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I uh, like it. Anybody I think, else see know. any of the other pictures that are nominated? Uh, have any? Candace and I were talking about uh, Get Out. Well, you know, Get Out, as I said to Marjorie, it has a shot at winning. 
And it has a shot because of the way they vote for the uh, the uh, best picture, which is, uh, um, I forget what the term is now, uh, completely. Shape of water. Is it a Weinstein picture? No. No. <laughs> no. But, but it's, you, it, uh, people who vote for best picture don't just vote for one thing. They vote for all eight, but in order of their preference. It's a preferential mm -hmm. Ballot. Oh, I see. Okay. And and so all of these things, once they add them all up, and how much uh, somebody got, and how many votes total they each got, then they, if none of them hit fifty percent, they then start taking from the bottom and giving to the top and whatever until they have a winner. So by um, that leaders. going on, you could have another thing that went on like last year, in which maybe Moonlight wasn't really the favorite picture, the favorite of of the most people. But because of this preferential balloting, it won. And the same might be true of Get Out, which is not a bad movie, by the way. And, and I think Jordan Peele deserves uh, credit for, you know, it's his first movie, and he just did a terrific job. If you haven't seen it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, scary, scary, or scary? It's, it, well, it, it's a scary peop it's a movie for black people. Uh, it's about a, it's about a guy who goes in has a, a white girlfriend and goes home to visit his parent her parents, but somehow there seems to be something very weird going on with the black people in this community, uh, and it becomes a horror film for black people. What? How do you wear his pants? I wasn't gonna go there, Phil. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Phil. Oh man. Phil, Phil Phil's decided that he maybe has like a calling card here, and uh, it, it's his it's his bit. Uh, yes, Jeff. <laughs> well, we saw three uh, billboards yeah. uh, the other night. Yeah, I bet it's pretty good. It's a, it's, I agree. It's, it's a good yeah, film, I but a, a, as for for a what I call a, a complete movie with all the elements just being done terrifically, uh, for me, The Shape of Water is the best picture of the year. It's just a beautiful picture, yeah, and so and uh, I think uh, Guillermo del Toro will win for best uh, director. That I do think is almost a lock. Um, did hey, you see Sam did Rockwell? You... Sam Rockwell in Three Billboards was f fabulous. He was fabulous. I mean, but uh, I think yeah. if you didn't see Richard Jenkins in uh, in Shape of Water, his performance was amazing. Just amazing. Yeah. No, uh, I agree. Sally Hawkins in Shape of Water. I mean, oh yeah, uh, you know Frances she, McDormand. She's probably got it. I, I who, think she's who? got it. Uh, Fra Frances McDormand. Uh, no, Sally. Oh Hawkins. no, oh no. Frances McDormand will win that one. You think yeah. Frances McDormand? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I. Don't, I like Sally Hawkins' job better because she plays a mute. You know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. people go, well, she didn't have to act. She didn't have any lines. You know. I mean, it's. it's oh stupid. bullshit! Yeah. 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 Well, what's her name in the, the in the worker. in the piano? <laughs> Duke, uh, when, on, oh yeah, yeah, Daddy in the Duke. piano. The piano. Uh, what she won the Oscar and she was a little girl and she didn't right. talk. She didn't say a word. Uh, what the hell was that? In the piano, like twenty five yeah. years ago. Yeah. yeah. She was uh, in True Blood. Um, yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking name. about. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll tell you, someone else won an Academy Award for playing somebody who didn't talk. Uh, and that was uh, years ago, and that was uh, who was it? Was Marcel, it? Marcel. Just a couple years ago. I think it was Jane Wyman and Johnny Belinda. I thought we were going to hear. Wasn't the piano uh, a guy who was living in the ruins in, in, in Nazi Germany? Pianist. No, no, that's that the, the pianist. pianist. That was the pianist. Yeah, yeah. which is sometimes known as the pianist. Which once you get your prostate removed, you'll be called. Yeah, uh, we're going to call you the pianist. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I'll be able to pee. Hey, Mel Brooks, the silent movie. There was not, the only guy that talked in that movie was, was Marcel Marceau. Marcel. Marcel. Yeah. Well, yeah, but oh, well, just a couple years ago, or the year before last, the best picture was a silent movie. Uh, the art, the artist. That's right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, one of the exactly. proudest moments of my life was when Marcel Marceau looked at me and said, "Do you know you look like a young Albert Einstein?" Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wonder if you use that line a lot. I've used it. I've, I was. I used it to uh, my friend uh, uh, Jack Garfine, who knew Marcel Marceau quite well, and I, I told him that story, and he said, "Yeah, it sounds like something he'd say." Anyway, he it, huh? He yes. He, well, how was I going to interview him if he I wouldn't don't, talk? I don't know. I'm, I was <laughs> like. Yeah. You know, like Lewis Black. You know, yeah. Like Hall <laughs> like yeah. Marx, you yeah. do with whistling. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, man. Hey, well, that, uh, let me see here. I'm trying to get my, where's my, you ever lose your cursor 
and it's you ever lose beam songs? <laughs> well, no, I, I was looking for my cursor. Song? Sometimes you it's on one screen, sometimes it's on another. And, and we have the most people we've had all night listening to us right now. How, how does that happen? Anyway, this is good. Magic. We'll get more. Hey, guys, link this show you on just, your Facebook yeah, page. Yeah, everybody, so link this show to your, on, on your I Facebook did, I page. Did, I think that, and, and two friends of mine went on. Oh. Yes. You know why they're listening now? They're getting ready to go on to Jack's show. Yeah, that's right. Oh, <laughs> and, oh and, low, and, low. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we, we got more people listening all night right now. I don't know why, but we should keep going. Uh, anyway, hey, thank you, everybody. Why don't you all give a good wave goodbye so everybody can say good night to you? And hopefully, we'll see you next week. Bye bye. And that's it. That's our citizens panel for tonight. All of them, and uh, they did a. It's a terrific job, and we didn't really talk about the Second Amendment, except for just a second or so there. The uh, reason is, folks, that you say, why didn't you? Well, because we have for the last, what, eight nights or something, that was the topic du jour. Anyway, that's it for tonight. That's it for the week. We'll be back again uh, next week on Tuesday. We take the two days off. In the meantime... Uh, stay tuned for Jack and Amy. They're next with The Intersection, followed at 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, Eastern Time, uh, by Connections. Uh, we'll see you right after Damien does his show on Tuesday at 9.30, and then we'll be here at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend, everybody. <laughs>